were happy. And the young girl had gone on to a. She, she bought a new apartment and she wanted a career and stuff like that, so she moved on. And everyone was quite happy. Yeah, that was good. Good morning, guys. Um, so it's Tuesday, the 14th of April. Mm. And as you can see, it's sunny. Really exciting. Um, yes, yeah, so it's just another normal day on the yard. Um, I was going to do our summer routine um, that we do with the horses, but I think I'll do that on a day where I'm not riding as much because um, it's a lot of filming. So today is another horsey one. Um, and I asked on my Instagram poll who you guys wanted to see training today and um, funnily enough the winner was Joey <coughs> I put Wilfred and Joey up against each other and Joey won go on Joe um, so yeah we'll see him training today also um, if you guys are watching this go ahead and share it onto your Instagram stories um, share your favourite bits and uh, yeah, tag me, it's Towers432, so I can see you guys watching and enjoying because um, it really inspires me to make more vlogs. So, let's get into it. my little sit down on the old pew um, and chat to you so what has been happening since the last vlog um, I actually had the nicest week last week um, so I vlogged on Monday and then I didn't have too much going on yeah no I left it I left it quite um, empty I had recorded the week before I recorded three podcasts so I didn't record a podcast last week um, and it was just so nice to have time um and uh yeah it really made me realize that i need to work towards having more free time um even when the lockdown's finished because i am such a better person when i am not so busy um and if you guys have followed the vlog a lot you will know that i've had many um speed bumps with working too hard, driving myself too hard and then burning out um, and I'm sure you have seen the effects it had on me and um, last year was probably the worst one. So I just feel like, I feel like last year was like a warning um, to not go down that road because it's, I feel like in our culture everybody thinks that the harder you work the more, it's like a badge of honour, um, especially like in the equestrian world. But I'm starting to feel like starting to feel and realise that it's not and you shouldn't just work yourself into the ground because you feel like you should. Um, but yeah. And obviously I need to find a way where I can continue to um, financially support myself and not run myself into the ground. Uh, yeah. But anyway, I'm digressing. Um, what else happened? 
Oh, another thing that I did, which was really cool, um, on Sunday, I, actually it was on Friday, I got nominated to run 5k for the NHS, and then donate, and then nominate five people, um, and I did it on Sunday, now I haven't run for about a month, and um, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do it, I did walk some bits, but it was really good, really fun, I felt so pumped after, but I stupidly didn't stretch before or after, um, and so, sorry, and so yesterday, I really struggled with a really bad lower back um, and it like got to the point at the end of the day where it completely seized and I was like Hur! Um and so I learnt my lesson to definitely stretch before and after running um, and also that I need to strengthen my core a little bit for running um, and to not suddenly run 5k but that was really cool and amazing to do a little something for the NHS. Um, and then what else has been happening? Not much, guys, because we're all on lockdown. Um, yeah, that's about everything. So today we are riding on the horses. Um, oh, that was what I was going to say. I'm so frustrated because, you know, like the road we've had with Belle. Um, so basically, she's thrown a splint now. <laughs> so um, you have to leave them alone for six weeks while it forms. Um, and I just feel so frustrated because she's such a lovely horse um, and she has that potential but I can't do anything with her it's been like one thing after the other and it's just very very frustrating I feel very sorry for her and I'm just oh, meh. Um, but that is about the only thing that's frustrating um, yeah, anyway, um, so I'm going to ride all the others today. I'm going to film Jojo because he won the Instagram vote. And um, then this afternoon I've got some virtual lessons. And then I'm going to have a really nice big stretchy session. I think that's it. Barbie's up first. Huh? Doing so well, aren't you? Barry, you could go see it. She's close. Hi there. She's only on the board. What have you done to the front of her foot? Where? Taking the front of her foot now. Where? Oh, maybe it's because she's got shoes on. Oh dear. We're doing some in hand first. And then I'll climb aboard. She's being so well behaved. Um, I counted her for the first time the other day. And she's so polite because she like really wanted to bronk and kick off. And she did. But not kick off, I mean bronk. Um, but it was like so polite and so soft and so like sorry mummy sorry mummy um so once she got all that out of her system she was really good <sighs> so yeah Are you ready? Well, if you were outvoted by Joey, how do you feel? Let down, he said. Let down. So, um, I'm just on Eagle. And I've done Wilf. Um, he was really good. I felt a bit worried about him because obviously the physio can't get here and you know if his back gets tight then it's like, oh, really difficult. Um, but he's doing really well. Uh, and I've got a really nice, like, big trot at the end, but it was like, relaxed, not tight. So I was like, yes, come on. Um, so I'm on Eagle at the moment, and funnily enough, you know, like last week, 
felt amazing. This week I literally, okay it's only Tuesday, but I haven't been able to hit the nail on the head with him, um, which can be quite frustrating. I think what it is, is just one, it's one of those things, and two, my body from the, the running um, is so tight and like sore and not equally tight and sore, so I wouldn't say I'm at the top of my game. Um, uh, so that is a lesson for you kids make sure to stretch after running and before and do a core exercise to engage yourself and don't try and go straight in at 5k just going to set the pixio up um crazy i've had so many people message me asking me is it worth it shall i get one um now we've had a bit of a tough relationship meeting the Pixio camera. Um, the first one I had it had a faulty beacon so I think I just got it and expected it to work straight away so that's just one of those things and I don't think you can blame them for that it's just life. Um, and then I just don't know I just couldn't understand how to set it up someone came out they helped me set it up um, and it just didn't work and I used to get so frustrated because I felt like it really ruined my riding sessions like faffing around with it and I felt like it was doing the opposite to helping me. Anyway, I just got annoyed. Um, I must have had a lot on my plate at the time and um, just put it away um, just for a year. I was like, I'm not dealing with this. Anyway, and then um, the lockdown happened and I was like, had you know a bit more time and I was like, I should really try it again. Cause I was getting annoyed. The vlogs didn't have any riding in them. Um, and I felt like people were sort of going off them because of that. And I was like, no, I want to share my riding and I think it's also good for me to watch my riding so I was like let's do it so I tried it downloaded new software like complete fresh start um, and then the first time I rode with it I did it in hand and it worked and then the first time I rode with it I ran too close to the camera span it out and it didn't film me and I was like <sighs> so there was that temptation to throw it back into a cupboard but I was like no let's try again um, and now it's working lol I'll laugh if it doesn't work today but um, no, I literally love it. Now I love it. It's great. Also before you watch this video, um, I am wearing a horsey husband hoodie. Um, no, I'm not a horsey husband, but it was in my wardrobe from a photo shoot. So I really like them, they're super comfy. And I'm running low on clothes because I'm at my parents. So that's why. So I thought I would do a little voiceover um, in this training session because it's one of the younger horses. Um, so I start with Joey doing um, some of the groundwork because he's naturally very um, stiff and that's something he's always struggled with. So I just do stuff to loosen him up a little bit. Um, on reflection, looking at this, uh, I needed to have like a higher tempo in these, um, like to get a quicker step but that's just one of those things that it's hindsight isn't it um so next time i ride him i'm definitely going to think about that in the groundwork beforehand So I always start with um, walk, trot and canter, stretch on both reins. So this is just thinking about getting him um, a little bit more supple through the rib cage, which is where he really struggles um, with suppleness. Thinking about making sure he's a little bit more in front of my leg because whenever Joey starts, he's very sluggy. Um, you'll see how much I'm having to use my leg here. Um, and it's really tempting to like get after him, chase him off um, and chase him forwards. But what happens when I do that is he doesn't like connect himself and then um, yes, he's gone faster in that moment but I don't feel like he gets more and more in front of my leg throughout the session. So what you'll see throughout this um, video is especially like towards the end in the trot how he connects more. I don't think I rode the canter very well on this day. Um, that is again one of those things. But you can see the difference, um, not in the stretch, sorry, I mean like when I pick him up, you can see the difference in the canter to the trot. He's so much more connected in the trot and that is why he um, is more in front of my leg. So really important to remember with horses that are behind the leg, it's not just about like 
kicking them forwards and making them go it's about like why are they behind the leg figuring out like what's going on so for Joey it's the lack of connection um, it's the fact that he's very stiff and he wants to tighten up when he goes forwards instead of staying relaxed so that's something that we're really looking at teaching him on the ground work is going forwards and staying relaxed um, and also in the ridden work also, side note, um, you guys might notice that he's not wearing any shoes. That is just because of the coronavirus and we weren't sure if the farriers were allowed to come out. He normally is in shoes, um, which is why his movement looks a little bit different at the moment. He moves, um, he does move better when he's got his front shoes on, but he's quite happy um, without them. So uh, yeah, he will have them back on soon, but that's just why. So there's me jamming out. Um, anyway, I don't spend too long in the walk to start with because he's a little bit lazier. I kind of just get going straight away. And you'll see with these cans transitions, it is far from perfect, but um, not long ago, he had a really big complex with those and got very, very nervous of doing them. So I sort of take whatever I get now. Uh, yeah, and just ask a little bit more as um, as the session continues. But let's chat about the canter. So um, on reflection, like watching the video, I feel like I should have spent longer with the canter, getting him a little bit more connected before asking him to do harder things um, like the travers and the shoulder in and the um, leg yield at the wall. So here is the leg yield at the wall. So basically that is travers without inside bend. Um, and that's a really good way to sort of introduce the horse into um, like a lateral movement in the canter. Um, so again, I'm just asking for another canter transition and that's the first one off the left rein. Um, he does struggle, his left hind leg is weaker. Um, so it's not perfect, but he is getting the idea and as he gets stronger, those become more fluent and more clear. Okay, so it's round two for um, trying the right strike off and that was much more clear um, and it was on my aid and it was more through. So that's what I mean by like, I don't get too stressed out about the first ones at the moment with him. That was a terrible downwards transition for me. Um, but anyway, yeah, I don't get too stressed out about the first one. Okay, so now we're in trot and um, on reflection, he is a lot more connected um, in the trot work than he was in the canter. Uh, it's so good, honestly, so, so good to watch yourself riding back because you just, you see things um, that you don't notice when you're on the horses. Um, and I think it's a really good training exercise. As much as it's hard sometimes to watch yourself um, and like I am my own biggest critic and um, sometimes struggle to watch myself. I think it's really necessary to see see what you're doing, see what the horses are doing. Um, because something that I'm really conscious about with Joey uh, is that he always tries to fall out the outside shoulder on both rates, he's always done it. Um, it's kind of his way of squirming out from pushing. Um, but what I've noticed from this video is I really do stop the outside shoulder um, coming out but I really lose that uh, like bend around the inside leg and the inside bend. So it's something that I need to find like the middle ground of stopping his shoulder falling out, but also keeping a little bit more bend around my inside leg now. So when you first start stopping the horse falling through the outside shoulder, it's okay if you don't have that perfect inside bend. But I feel like now Joey um, needs to sort of like advance a little bit more with that, um, get a little bit more push. Um, yeah, so you'll just see I'm doing so many transitions, lots of uh, trot, walk, walk, trot transitions. And this is just really to get him, it gets him more off my leg, um, it gets him more connected, it gets him more pushing and it gets him more through. Uh, and I've just felt like it really helps him. Um, so I think reflection again, that if I was to do this session over, I'd probably spend more time with my canter transitions, um, getting the same feeling getting the same connection. It's difficult with Joey because I sometimes compare him to Molly, they're the same age, and um, Molly is training, like doing advanced medium stuff. Um, and Joey, I feel like I sometimes expect him to be doing that. Uh, and that shouldn't be at all. I should sort of train him with where he's at. 
And so I think really he needs to still be really getting the novice stuff good um, before progressing on that little bit more. Um, you will also notice now that I am riding him off the wall. This is something that I try and do quite a lot with him because he does have a tendency to hug on the wall and um, just find support in it. And I find bringing him off the wall is really good for getting him um, into two reins and straight. Also, you'll notice as the training session goes on, um, when he goes across the diagonal and he's straight, you'll see how much he pushes compared to around a corner. Um, and this just is where I know it's weakness with him um, and I kind of, I just believe that there's a little bit more in there than he's showing at the moment um, because it's harder for them to push around a corner uh, so he needs to build the strength up for that and that's a little bit why we haven't competed him as much again because you know turning onto the centre lines um, and things like that he's just not strong enough to keep the trot I need. So coming across this diagonal, you'll see what I mean. There's just moments where he starts to just push that little bit more, like here. You see how it just looks a lot more effortless. Um, that for me, like as a rider, it feels like he just um, sort of like clicks together in that moment and his body connects and um, it's a little bit more effortless for him. Which is probably opposite. He's probably actually having to work really hard in that moment. But it feels like it's much more, um, it's much better for his body to be doing that. So really in the training sessions, that's what I'm working towards is, is trying to get that feeling more and more and more. Um, and then yeah, at the end, uh, I always find he's much more soft, much more um, happy to drop his head for the stretch. So I just spend some time again, letting him um, move his body. But yeah, that's basically Joey's training session. You're hot now. <laughs> so funny as I'm riding around, I'm thinking about what I'm going to say over the video. I'm like, oh yeah, this is it. It's actually really good for my training because um, it makes me not that I don't think because I normally overthink, but it makes me think about what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, it's so good. He was so clever. How pretty is that tree? And those trees. Oh, just delightful. You're not eating it. You're not. No. Joey normally dives into the hedge to get a nibble, don't you? But there's no hedge yet. Good boy, mole man. Good boy. So, Molly only did a quick sesh because he worked quite hard yesterday and also I've got to go and teach. Um, because of the allotted time thing with people on livery yards, it's really random times where I'm teaching, but that's fine. Um, it's just nice that I can. So we're really, there's, there's so much you can do with the, the canter. What, what's a great one is if, um, you know, once you've started to get this little bit more sit, is if you go around the outside of the arena and like every other marker you do like a 15 or a 10 metre circle depending how you feel like you can turn him. Yeah, so I didn't really know what to expect, I didn't know if it was going to work or not. But Does it feel yeah, much yeah. different? Um, not really, no, because like, my mum stood in the middle so it's just like you're there really. Oh, good.
I think they're working really well actually. I'm going to carry them on after yeah. the lockdown. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to like book a few more after it as well because it's hard to get out to everywhere. Yeah. Um, like all the time if I'm competing as well. So it's useful just having them at home. Yeah, and it can be really oh, like, boy. um, you can really just do it when you when you need to, can't you? Yeah. Oh. Cool. Right, I am going to shoot. Yeah, thank you. Um, but well done, that was really good. Thank you. And have a lovely day. Thank you. Yeah. All right, bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. I love these virtual lessons, they're so great. Molly's doing some rope of hope. So, big day, we finally can get this bag on Molly. Yes, we can. You're going to show everyone? You're going to show everyone your brave you are? Yeah! Oh, look! Good boy. <laughs> Do you know how long that took? Um, I think we started in November. Yeah, he had his first session in November. And, um... <laughs> and uh, yeah it's taken that long but he is a rare case of a nervous nervous one um, it's amazing though I'm starting to understand him so much more working on the ground he's like a really a mixture of like you really have to tell him no and then you also have to give him like a lot of like fuss um, and he likes soft fuss which is weird for a horse that's quite like Wah. Um, that makes no sense I don't even know if I can explain him in a nutshell. He's a complex character. Shh, shh, shh. 